Hello, this is a short video showing you the cat display in operation. Um, I'm holding the camera here so it may not come out as best as it could and I'm sure later on down the track somebody else will put up even better videos. Okay, so we'll just have a look here. At the moment we can see that the display plugs into the cat port in the back of the radio. Okay, simple as that. That's the cat display there. Okay, it's a custom PCB. You can see the PCBs there. Standard three and a half inch TFT display. Plugs into the PCB and it has a custom program on it. We're using a um, Atmel processor, and uh, it's pretty near fully programmed to do to do all the features that it does do. So we'll have a quick look. Okay, so let's have a look firstly at mode. As we change the mode, we can see it changes on the display as well. We'll just rotate through the different modes. And you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, depending on the mode that you're in, um, you'll see the bottom options will change. Okay. Right, so let's just change the band. A lot of information is shown on the display that you just don't get to see on the rig. Okay, we'll have a look at a few of the controls. We see that since I activated DNF, it came up on the display. DNR, same sort of thing. DBF, same sort of thing. Um, what else have we got? The menus. On the bottom of the um, the rig, don't. The rig doesn't send out information to the display. The display actually has to request information from the rig. So some changes that you make on the rig aren't shown on the display immediately until something else happens. Right? Anyway, um, so the, the display runs on a loop, and the loop goes through and it looks for the most common changes. If you're not playing with the rig for a while, the time on the loop gradually gets longer and longer and so what you may find is that it's pretty responsive now when I click and change my frequency but if you haven't used the rig for say uh, a minute we slow things right down on the display um, in the display program loop so after a minute it might take the display a tenth of a second or maybe a hundredth of a second to determine that you've moved and then change the display but as soon as you start playing with the rig the display goes oh he's playing with me so playing with the rig so I need to increase decrease sorry the loop delay and so in this way uh, we try to eliminate too much traffic on the cat port to the rig okay um, so we have VFO A, VFO B, we've got split that comes up. We've got, uh, let's go to another menu, let's have a look at. Okay, we have if the mode supports repeater, um, the repeat will come up. Uh, should be noted for the cat display for the, there's two versions. There's one for the 857 and 897 and another for the 817. Um, and of course that works with the D's and the ND's as well um, but the cat display for the 817 is the only one which will actually show you the frequency of the repeater split the 857 we haven't worked out how to get that information out of the rig yet when we do we'll update the firmware so as time goes by we'll update the firmware if you have a look at the firmware video you'll see that it's really easy to update all you need is a, is a 4 or 5 dollar uh, USB to serial converter um, and all those details will be provided um, in due course on the website.
on how to update things. Okay, so re reverse doesn't come up. Um, okay, so just we're doing repeater. Okay, forget where I'm at. <laughs> we'll change the mode again. So tone and touch tone is not reported on the display. I've only tried to put on the display things that I would regularly use. You got any ideas and you sort of say, hey Chris, you've missed out something? Flick me an email. Okay, we can see noise blanker comes up. And we can see AGC. And as we change the AGC type, we can see that. Um, IPO, ATT. Um, if the mode supports narrow, it will show it on the display. Um, what else? That's about it. Oh, one of the things I did want to have a quick look at is, um, sorry, we'll go back to the DSP settings. The 857897 has some really good DSP functions, but I always found it confusing as to how they work. So I've tried to graphically re represent that in this little bar up here. Now, if we go and Press and hold one of these. We can see the okay. So the DNR level will show there. But um, what we want is no, we don't want that. We want okay. High pass cutoff. You'll see is at 280 hertz, and it's actually shown. I don't know whether you can see that. Sorry, I the video is not too clear. Right, that's a bit better. You can see it's indicated 280 hertz there. So if we change that to 700 hertz on the rig you'll see on the display when I go and set that um, it's it should have moved the bar graph there now I wasn't watching that part to see if it did but I'm, I'm pretty sure it would have and um, hold on we'll try it with the low pass cutoff we'll set that right up to 6000 okay there we can see so basically the blue represents the audio that will get through the DSP filter so it's like a uh, well you set the low pass and you set the high pass and the filter will show you the approximate audio bandwidth of what's coming through it's um, it just gives you a bit of a visual indicator on how that all works um, you've got two bar graphs up here for transmit you've got the watts times 10 and a modulation now I think it's modulation it could be ALC I mean there's none of this that I'm getting out of the EEPROM and the rig is documented so we're having to work it out as we go but I'm pretty sure that this 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 bottom one is mod anyway that's the that's the cat display it, it's offering quite a bit and I spent a quite a bit of features and I spent a lot of time on it um, hopefully you guys will like it and um, I welcome any feedback. All right, all the best.